Front row bar and rear right height. Front row bar and rear right height. Bump settings, rebound settings, uh, spring rates. We need to put pressure in, pressure in. The camber, the caster, the ride height. Let's just do a sweep of brake bias. Do a sweep of brake bias in the front. The roll bars, springs, dampers. Let's go for the toe in, please. Tire pressures, tire temperatures. Two pounds. Two pounds in all round. Your anti roll bar, your ride heights, your cambers, and your toe. Then lower the rear one more turn. So we can remove the rear one more. The rear one more. The previous one I also went up on the front right side. Plus two degrees rear wing. Plus two degrees rear wing. Yeah, it's all about balance. If you've got too much rear grip, you've got understeer. If you've got too much front grip, you've got oversteer. It's a bit like if you're sailing a uh, sort of a America's Cup yacht. Everybody's not in the middle of the boat, drinking tea, reading, uh, reading the Daily Telegraph. They're all over the boat, hanging out the side, altering the sails, trimming everything up. And it's just like driving a car. When you go around the corner, the weight is constantly moving around the car. As a driver, you're always trying to find the perfect balance through the corner. Um, you know, you want the balance through the corner, you want the grip, you want the braking ability, the cornering ability, the aero balance, the mechanical balance, all these factors which are obviously contribute to the, to the feel and, and the lap time of the car. And, um, you know, what we're trying to do all the time is trying to get, trying to get the trade-off between, you know, the best, uh, the best levels, grip levels and, and performance levels, downforce levels that we can. And, uh, you know, constantly changing, small changes, the camber, the caster, the ride height, um, you know, by a mil here, half a mil there, which, you know, to, I guess to, to the normal person on the street, you think, you know, half a mil, how can that possibly make any kind of difference? But yet, you know, it could be night and day in a race car going, at, you know, close to 200 miles an hour. That half a mil change can be, you know, magnified by 10, 15 times. So it, it's a huge thing. Um, and that's why it's, you know, it's, it's a real um, black art to get the car just right. You can influence how the weight moves as a driver, like if you put your foot on the brake it'll go forward, if you accelerate it'll go back, um, how hard you turn, how fast it loads, loads up, and then the engineer can influence that, the balance front and rear with the roll bars, springs, dampers, ride heights. So what you're trying to do is figure, figure out how you, how you get the weight in the right place for the most performance. Well, the biggest change for this year is going to symmetrical tires front and rear. You've got different challenges have been presented because the weight distribution in the car has been optimized to optimize the bigger tire. So that's inherently different than what we had in the past. Well, I'm wondering if we're crushing the inside shoulder and it's actually unloading it. It's a question of actually getting that balance again with, with, the, with the extra front grip that, that is potentially in the car with this big front tire. You've then got to get the rear to follow it so that the driver has confidence to turn in quickly and go back to throttle as early as he can. That's what it's all about. The throttle makes the car go, and, the, and if you're not on the throttle, you're not going. So it's, it's about carrying speed into the corner so you don't have to stop on the brake, you use the brakes too much, and then getting back to power early. That's really the fundamentals of it, and having a balance then through the corner. And if the driver's worried about the rear, he's not going to go back to throttle. And, it, and, it, and if, he, if, he, if the car's washing wide with understeer, it's not going to go back to throttle either. That was two and a half laps from when it came on. I think your inner ear as a driver, you know, tells you a lot about where the limit is. And as you're going into a corner, you really, the whole challenge of racing is to anticipate where the car is going to end up. And I think the more and more you drive, the more you know inherently as you approach a corner or a braking zone, about what's going to happen next. And I think that you know pretty quickly in one of these cars if you're right or wrong because it's an aero-dominant car. So if the aero platform is consistent and you've got a nice, you know, consistent aero balance on the car, that gives you the ability to take the limit a step higher and really start to exploit the tires a little bit more. So it's a, it's a, it sounds complicated, but it's actually very intuitive and very easy. As long as you keep it simple, you won't go far wrong, I think. <laughs> and if you do go wrong, you say, the bloody engineer. <laughs>